Captain Alex Jarosh, Commanding Officer, Naval Surface Warfare Center, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Greater Philadelphia Sea Perch Challenge. The United States Navy is the number one Navy in the world. Part of the reason is superior equipment and weapon systems. These weapon systems were designed by scientists, engineers, and technicians who start out learning science in elementary and junior high school just like you. The scientists and engineers build many different types of systems for the Navy, including unmanned vehicles for special missions. One particular type of unmanned vehicle is a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. In the real world, when the Navy wants a new type of system, like an ROV, we specify our needs, contractors design and build a system, and the Navy selects the best one. It's very similar to what you'll be doing in the Sea Perch Challenge. You'll build your ROV, you'll learn how to operate it, and you'll compete to see who does the best job. I have two assistants standing by who are anxious to give you all the details. Hi, I'm Anthony. And I'm Amanda, and we're your official Sea Perch Guide. It's gonna be great. You guys get to design and build an ROV. And just like the captain said, an ROV is... A remotely operated vehicle. And for Sea Perch, it's an underwater robot. Which means you'll be connected to your vehicle with the cable. Right, no runaway perches. Navy engineers actually use ROVs a lot. Any idea what they're used for? Of course. The Navy uses ROVs for any one of the three Ds. Anything dull, dirty, or dangerous. In other words, Navy engineers use ROVs for tasks that are either too dangerous or can't practically be done by humans. Actually, there are ROVs all around you. Oh yeah? Yeah. Ever play with a remote controlled car? Yes, actually I had this really cool remote control car one time. It had a snake head that popped up and it sprayed water and it drove around the house really, really fast with all these little, uh, uh, never mind. A remote controlled car is a type of ROV. You control it with a remote and it does what you tell it to. It's simple, but it's the same concept. That makes sense. I mean, the military does use ROVs on a daily basis, so it would only be natural that you would see some in everyday life. But for Sea Perch, you guys will be building a very specific ROV. All right, everybody, in the pool, let's go. Uh, Anthony, I, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, but Sea Perch does focus specifically on remotely controlled underwater vehicles. Each team will build and design an underwater ROV. Let's check it out. But this competition isn't just about building your ROV. You'll be evaluated on three things, performance, presentation, and design. And as fun as an ROV is to make, it's even more fun to use. We're here at Drexel University. This is the pool where the competition will take place. For the competition, it'll be set up a lot differently than it is now. Yeah, it'll be a lot livelier too. This is where you'll have to show you know how to use the ROV that you built. You'll have to demonstrate a maneuvering mission, and either a recovery mission or a mine neutralizing mission. During the maneuvering mission, you'll have to guide your ROV through obstacles in the water. For the recovery mission, you'll have to retrieve a set of rings, each of varying weights. Points will be awarded depending upon the weight of each ring. And of course, there's mine neutralizing. Pretend mines. <laughs> but for that mission, there's actually a camera attached to your ROV. Very cool. You'll also need a notebook that talks about how well you work together as a group, what you did and how you did it, all along with information about your school, team members, and any materials you use to build your ROV. Everything will be broken down so you'll know exactly how long it should take and when you should be done. Just stick to the timeline and you'll do great. There's a presentation too. Uh, that could get a little damp in here. Not here. Here. You'll be in a room like this and you'll have 10 minutes to present your proposal. Everything from a company overview to technical specifics to sales information. And you can get creative with this part. You can make a PowerPoint or a video or both. It's up to you. Just remember, you've only got 10 minutes. And only six team members can be in the room. Speaking of teams. Right. You've got to work together as a team. It's a group project. 
That means you'll also get points for things like camaraderie. And sportsmanship. And morale. And spirit. <laughs> you get the idea. These will all count towards the final awards. You're junior engineers now and you'll have to act the part. But it's still going to be tons of fun. You guys can design team flags, team shirts, whatever you like. Just remember, you've got to cheer each other on. That's right. It's all about having fun and learning. And don't forget the awards. That's not what it's about. But there are awards. Yes, there are. You guys can receive first, second, or third place in any of the four categories we talked about. Vehicle performance, team presentation, teamwork summary, and sportsmanship and spirit. And there will be one overall award for the team with the highest score. So let's get started. It's time to impress the Navy. We'll be back soon to help guide you through the first phase. And help you understand just what it takes to engineer your ROV. See, See you, you next time. time. For the next four months, each of you will have your own role as you design and build your own ROV. You're in store for a fun and exciting adventure. On behalf of the United States Navy, I welcome you aboard. Good luck, and I hope to see your ROV in April.